assalamu alaikum today we are going to start uh, section number 16.4 and this is about green's theorem so green's theorem actually develops the relation between line integral and double integral so let's see uh, what does green's green's theorem state and what are the applications of green's theorem so first of all uh, as i told you green's theorem gets the relationship between the integral around a simple closed curve and a double integral over the plane region d bounded by the c the curve c okay now we assume that that this d consists of all the points inside c as well as all the points on c so the orientation uh, of a simple closed curve is positive uh, if it refers to a single counter clockwise transversal of c right so the positive orientation of simple closed curve c refers to a single counter clockwise uh, traversal of c so this is uh, counter clockwise you can see this direction is counter clockwise so this is positive orient positively oriented uh, closed curve and uh, this curve is negatively oriented because you can see the directions uh, its orientation is clockwise if c is given by the vector function rt where t lies between a and b then the region d is always on the left as the point rt traverses c so in positively oriented uh, curve c the region lies region d lies on left side of the curve right if c is given by the vector function rt then the region d always on the left as the point rt traverses c right let c be positively oriented piece wise smooth simple closed curve in the plane and let d be the region bounded by c so these are the conditions uh, for a curve to be satisfied uh, in order to satisfy the conditions for green's theorem so uh, let's state the green's theorem let c be a positively oriented as uh, i already said what is positively oriented that is it is uh, counter clockwise uh, its uh, direction is its orientation is counter clockwise so this is positively oriented curve so let c be positively oriented piece wise smooth simple closed curve in the plane and d be the region bounded by c and if p and q have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains d then the line integral along c of p dx plus q dy is equal to double integral of partial derivative of q with respect to x minus partial derivative of p with respect to y so this is actually the scalar form of uh, green's theorem we will uh, see the vector form of green's theorem in next sections so this is how uh, green's theorem gives us the relation between the line integral and the double integral so there is a notation uh, if you find this uh, circle on the integral sign then this indicates that the line integral is calculated using the positive orientation of closed curve c right so whenever you uh, see somewhere this circle uh, on the integral sign then this means uh, that the line integral is calculated using the positive orientation of the closed curve c so there is another notation 
for the positively oriented bounded curve of uh, D is partially. So the equation in Green's theorem can be written as double integral over the region D of uh, uh, partial derivative with this, uh, of Q with respect to X minus partial derivative of P with respect to Y is equal to uh, the line integral partially p dx plus q dy. So, this partially actually means uh, the positively uh, oriented boundary curve of D. Right? So, that is uh, along uh, instead of along C, we uh, uh, are writing here this partial D and this means this is the positively oriented boundary curve. Okay, Green's theorem should be regarded as the counterpart of the fundamental theorem of calculus for double integrals. Let's see how. Uh, compare equation 1 with the statement of the fundamental theorem of part 2 in this equation. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. And what is the equation 1? Uh, this is the equation 1 uh, we just uh, showed in previous slides. So, this is the equation 1. Now, there is, now compare these two, uh, there is an integral involving derivatives f dash in this integral and uh, partial derivatives uh, of q and p on the left side of uh, this equation. So, the right side involves the values of the original function f, q and p only on the boundary of the domain. Okay. So, this C is in fact boundary of the domain, boundary of this D, right? So, it makes sense. So, this can be uh, regarded as uh, the fundamental theorem part 2 for second integrals. In the one dimensional case, the domain is an interval, closed interval AB, whose boundary consists of just two points A and B. Now, first example, let us solve a line integral with the help of uh, Green's theorem. Uh, evaluate this line integral x4 dx plus xy dy, where C is this triangle, uh, triangular curve consisting of the line segment zero, from 0, 0 to 1, 0, and uh, then from z 1, 0 to 0, 1, and from 0, 1 to 0, 0. Okay. So, uh, this is positively oriented curve because uh, of uh, anti-clockwise uh, direction. So, although the given line integral could have uh, could be evaluated as usual by the uh, method of section 16.2, uh, we can evaluate this. Uh, that would involve setting up three separate integrals uh, along the three sides of the triangle. So, we will have to evaluate it along this line, then this line, then this line and then we will add up uh, in order to have uh, the um, value of uh, the line integral along C, uh, where C consists of the boundary of the triangle. Uh, separate integrals along three sides of the triangle. So, let us use Green's theorem instead. Uh, notice that the re uh, region D enclosed by C is simple and C has positive orientation. So, if we uh, let p x y is equal to x 4 that is p is equal to x 4 q is equal to x y then this line integral is equal to double integral according to Green's theorem double integral over the region D partial derivative of q with respect to x minus partial derivative of p with respect to y and this is equal to now this is the D region so we have to uh, convert it into a treated integral and for this, we need to find the values, uh, limiting value, limits of uh, upper and lower limits of x and y. So, uh, you can see x varies from 0 to 1 and y varies from 0 to this line. That is y varies from 0 to 1 minus x. And uh, partial q by partial x is y and partial p by partial y is 0 because this is independent of y. Uh, dy dx is dA and rest is the matter of integration and we have uh, answer by number 6. Example number 2, evaluate this line integral 
uh, where c is the circle x square plus y square so the region d bounded by c is the disk x square plus y square is less or equal to 9 so let's change to polar coordinate after applying the uh, green theorem so uh, uh, by the green theorem this is p this is q so uh, partial derivative uh, of uh, this function with respect to y is going to be 3 because this is uh, this uh, term is independent by this so partial derivative with respect to y is 0 so we have uh, Oh, sorry. What is this? Let me. Uh, what is P here and what is Q here? This is uh, with respect. Th this is multiplying actually dx. So this is going to be um, differentiated with respect to y. Yes, this, this will be differentiated with respect to y. And this will be uh, differentiated with respect to x. So uh, partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y. So this is the green theorem. So uh, 3 uh, partial p by partial y is 3. Okay. So uh, we have minus 3 here. And partial q by partial x is 7 because this term is independent of x. Okay. So it, it makes things easier. So 7 minus 3. Now we have 7 minus 3. Uh, double integral over the region d and uh, since c is the circle um, x square plus y square is equal to 9 so uh, the limits for uh, this circle radius lies between 0 to 3 and the angle lies between 0 to 2 pi and the uh, rest is actually the evaluation of this iterated integral and we have answer 36 pi Okay, in example 1 and 2, we found that the double integral was easier to evaluate than the line integral. And you can try uh, for the second example especially uh, uh, to evaluate the line integral using uh, the method we learned in 16.2. Uh, you will find it harder uh, or difficult uh, to calculate it using that conventional method. So, uh, particularly in example 2. Uh, Green's theorem uh, was easier to apply. Sometimes, though it's easier to evaluate the line integral, and Green's theorem is used in the reverse direction. For instance, it is known that P is equal to Q is equal to 0 on the curve C. Then the theorem gives, if it is known that P is equal to Q is equal to 0, that is both of the function P and Q are 0 on the curve C. Okay, We are just talking about the boundary curve uh, C which encloses the region D. right? So if P and Q both are 0 on the curve C then the theorem gives us double uh, integral over the region D is equal to 0 no matter what value P and Q assume in D. So inside P and Q uh, can have any value but on C uh, P and Q both are 0 then this double integral will become 0. So another application of the uh, reverse direction of the theorem is in computing areas. Uh, as we know that area of the region D is the double integral over the region D of 1 into dA. Okay? So uh, that is if partial Q by partial X minus partial P by partial Y is 1 we can calculate uh, area right so uh, let's see what are the situations when this uh, is equal to 1 so these are the situations if uh, there are several possibilities uh, so few of them are given here uh, that is if uh, p is 0 okay p is 0 then uh, partial derivative of p with respect to y is 0 and Q is then x, that is partial derivative of Q with respect to x is 1, then it is 1. Okay. Uh, if P is minus y, right? If P is minus y, then partial derivative of P with respect to y is minus 1, then this will make it 1. And in that case, Q must be 0 or Q must be some constant, right? Or uh, P is equal to minus 1 over 2y and Q is equal to 1 over 2x. 
even then uh, left hand side is equal to 1 so this equation holds so we can find area uh, by any of the uh, these possibilities so uh, this leads us to give uh, the formula for area uh, using line integrals so uh, the following formula for the area of d line integral can also help us find the area enclosed by the curve closed curve right so uh, area is equal to if uh, we choose uh, this option um, p is x okay and q is 0 then area is equal to this or if we choose uh, p is Uh, sorry in this case what we did p0 and qx okay and if p is uh, minus y and q is 0 even then this is area now what uh, uh, is done we used this option which uh, is p is equal to minus 1 over 2y and q is equal to minus uh, 1 over 2x then area becomes this okay so uh, there are different formulas for area 1 over 2 uh, the line integral closed uh, positively oriented closed curve along the positively oriented closed curve x dy minus y dx so these are the formulas uh, for uh, the area of uh, uh, of the region enclosed by a closed curve positively oriented closed curve see so find the area enclosed by the ellipse x square over a square plus y square over b square is equal to 1 now the ellipse has parametric equation x is equal to a cos t, y is equal to b sin t, where t lies between 0 to 2 pi. So using third formula in equation 5, we have, so this is the third formula, uh, we have a is equal to 1 over 2 x dy minus y dx. So c is actually uh, this uh, ellipse uh, and we have to find the area enclosed by this ellipse. So uh, for this uh, parametric uh, equations, uh, t lies between 0 to 2 pi. So, this becomes 0 to 2 pi. x is replaced by a cos t. Uh, d y is uh, b cos t dt. So, this is d y. Uh, y is replaced by b sin t. And dx is replaced by differential of this, which is minus a sin t dt. So, by evaluating this, we have uh, area of this ellipse is equal to pi AB and we already know that area of this ellipse is pi AB. So, we have uh, proved the theorem only for the case when where D is simple. We are not going to prove this. So, uh, ignore this slide actually. We are not going to prove this, we, but we have used the theorem. So, still we can uh, extend it to the case where D is finite union of simple regions. Uh, like this, if we have uh, uh, two regions D1 and D2, we can uh, uh, make them one by D1 union D2, uh, where D1 D2 are both simple. Okay, so and this is the way uh, how we can uh, join them. So the boundary D1 is C1, boundary of D1 is C1 union c3 okay so this is positively oriented closed curve c1 union c3 okay now the boundary of d2 is c2 and union minus c3 because uh, we have uh, to make it positively oriented that is anti-clockwise position if this uh, orientation is c3 then this is minus c3 okay so d2 is c2 union minus c3 uh, so applying green theorem to d1 and d2 separately uh, we have these two equations and uh, then adding them both we have uh, this form of the green theorem line integral along c1 union c2 uh, p dx plus q dy is equal to double integral over the region uh, partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y and its boundary c is equal to c1 union c2 thus this Green's theorem uh, this is the Green's theorem for d is equal to d1 union d2 
similarly we can extend it to uh, multiple uh, non over overlapping uh, simple regions uh, so uh, we can make uh, a union of uh, all such regions and this is the example of the extended uh, greens theorem and i urge you to uh, do it yourself this is uh, example number 4 in the book so if there is a problem we can uh, discuss it tomorrow inshallah uh, greens theorem can also be extended to the regions with holes okay so that is the regions are not simply connected so this can be extended for these as a this type of regions as well and so let's assume that the boundary uh, curves are oriented uh so that the region d is always in the left as the curve is traversed so the positive direction is counter clockwise for c1 but clockwise for c2 so then we can draw the lines so then we can join uh, these regions uh, so let's divide d uh, into two regions d dash and d double dash by means of the line shown here like this then applying means theorem to each d dash and d double dash uh, we have this form of uh, green theorem which is called extended green theorem and example 5 is uh, done uh, with the help of extended green theorem so example 4 and example 5 are your assignments try and solve yourself and uh, we'll discuss it tomorrow in detail inshallah take care bye love this